This is an NBC News special report. Here's Lester Holt. Good morning, everyone. We're coming on the air with the latest development of the Mueller investigation, the arraignment this morning of longtime Donald Trump associate Roger Stone just moments ago in federal court in Washington. Stone entered a plea of not guilty to charges of obstruction of justice. This is a picture of the arrival a bit earlier. Also, uh, witness tampering and making false statements. This comes just days after Stone was arrested in his Florida home in a pre-dawn raid by armed FBI agents who also confiscated Stone's computers and other devices. NBC News Justice correspondent Pete Williams was in the courtroom. He's made his way outside of the camera. Pete set the scene for us. Well, Roger Stone arrived about eight minutes before the hearing started, wearing a dark blue suit and tie, and the hearing was over quite quickly. Half of the hearing, at least, uh, nothing was said while he signed all the various papers. He's now going through his uh, post-hearing processing by the marshals before he'll be released and allowed to come outside the courthouse again. He's still out on bail, and the judge ordered that the same conditions that were set by the judge in Florida will still apply, meaning he has to stay either in the Southern District of, the, of Florida or D.C. here or the Eastern District of New York, the Brooklyn area. Same travel conditions, no passport, can't apply for a new passport and he was told to come back here for a status hearing on February 1st at 1:30 in the afternoon. He said almost nothing in court. His lawyer entered the not guilty plea for him and about the only thing he said was that he understood the judge's orders, that he has to abide by the travel restrictions and he raised his right hand and swore that he would abide by the conditions of release, Lester. So uh, not clear whether he'll come back here on February 1st for the status hearing. Sometimes defendants are not required to be present. I'm sure the lawyers will have something to say about that. But it was, as we expected, a very brief hearing, and he said virtually nothing. All right, Pete Williams, thank you. I want to bring in criminal defense and NBC News legal analyst Danny Savalas. Uh, Danny, we see and we know the charges as they stand right now. Does there, is there an opening here for additional charges as this case continues to go forward? Yes, the government can uh, file a superseding indictment down the road, which, if you believe that the Mueller team is continuing to investigate, for example, a broad conspiracy, but they don't believe they have enough to charge it yet, that is likely what would happen. A later on down the road superseding indictment that names Roger Stone and possibly other defendants, depending on what is uncovered. What are you going to tell All right, Danny, report? thank you. Peter Alexander is at the White House for us. Peter, yesterday we heard from the uh, acting Attorney General Whitaker who said the Mueller investigation is winding down. Is there anything inconsistent with what we're seeing here with this uh, new case and that statement? Well, it does give indications that Robert Mueller may be sort of winding down in terms of his investigation. Other sort of indications we've seen recently, the fact that the sentencing phase for Michael Flynn uh, is expected to take place shortly. But even as we heard from Matt Whitaker, the acting attorney general this morning, we are hearing from top Democrats, Nancy Pelosi, of course, the House Speaker, and Adam Schiff, who's the head of the House Intelligence Committee, both saying they don't want to hear it from the acting attorney general. They think Robert Mueller can speak for himself. NBC News was first to report last December, according to government officials and others familiar with the investigation, that it could be winding down, that a confidential report from Robert Mueller in the Russia investigation could come as early as mid-February. So for now, we wait. Here at the White House, though, the president has been fiercely trying to distance himself from Roger Stone, a man that he's been close to, a confidant for decades now, saying that Stone wasn't a part of his campaign, at least anywhere near the election. Sarah Sanders and insisting that this has nothing to do with the president and has nothing to do with the White House. Lester. All right, Peter Alexander at the White House. Thank you very much. We'll continue to follow this and all the day's news. I'll be back with complete details tonight on NBC Nightly News. For now, I'm Lester Holt, NBC News, New York. Good day.